Greetings, strangers. I'm Britt. And I'm Dee. Welcome to another episode of It's a Strange World After All. <laughs> Why? Because <laughs> <laughs> you have to do it that way. <laughs> I'm not doing that. <laughs> you are just... Uh, the deal was, <laughs> if I say it first, you have to say it the way that I say it. <laughs> I don't remember a deal. I said, do I want to do this <laughs> like this or what if I just did it by myself and like layered myself? It's a strange world after all. And then just layer it. You get what I'm saying? <laughs> you do that. Uh, what's the first one yeah. I did? It's, it's a strange, strange world after all. after all. And then it's supposed to be Black History Month. Why are you singing? Country? Oh, well. Black people. Technically, we invented country, so. Country rhythm and blue. Rhythm. Yeah. I forgot about that. I knew what I was trying to say. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of It's, it's a Strange, strange world, world After All. all. The podcast where we discuss true crime cases, the supernatural, urban legends, conspiracy theories, and all of the things that keep the world strange. In honor of Black History Month, we will continue with stories centering around Black lives. In today's episode, we discuss Meredith Hunter a young man who was killed while attending the Altamont Free Concert with his girlfriend on December 6, 1969. 69. 69. <laughs> I don't know why I said it like that. What you say, 69? Yeah. <laughs> 69 and feeling fine. <laughs> Nin- <laughs> 1969. Meredith Hunter was an 18-year-old from Berkeley, California. He was nicknamed Murdoch and was described by his friends as a flashy dresser with a big afro. I too have been described as a flashy. <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a big afro. No, so. Meredith, along with his girlfriend, Patty. Along with his Caucasian girlfriend, Patty. <laughs> I mean, I feel like the Patty fact that Patty Mayonnaise. <laughs> Patty mayonnaise. The fact that she's Caucasian is kind of, I mean, it could be a factor. You know what I mean? Yeah. 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 So we'll we'll mention that she's Caucasian. I believe it is. Meredith, along with his girlfriend, Patty, and another couple traveled from Berkeley to attend the Altamont Free Concert. His sister, Dixie, warned him about the racism in that area, so he took his twenty two Smith & Wesson pistol for protection. That's a little ironic that his sister's name is Dixie. Why? Because Dixie is the name of a song. That's why the Dixie Chicks name uh, changed their name. I think they're just the Chicks now. But Dixie is like a racist song. Oh. Yeah. The Altamont Free Concert was a music festival in Northern California and was created by the Rolling Stones and was supposed to be the West Coast equivalent of Woodstock. Woodstock was the result of months of careful planning by a team of well-funded organizers, and Altamont was improvised and didn't have a venue until days before the event. The organizers finally settled on the Altamont Speedway location for the free concert. So basically it was a um a fire festival situation. So like fire festival <laughs> but yeah, free pretty much. I, I guess. Yeah. It was just free. You yeah. get what you pay for type of situation. <laughs> exactly. Some of the acts scheduled to perform were Santana, The Grateful Dead, Nash and Young, Crosby, and the Jefferson Airplane. Several dozen members of the Hells Angels motorcycle gang acted as security for the event in exchange for $500 worth of burr 
<laughs> okay, that's that's crazy to me because I don't know much about them now, but they were known to be racist. So that right there is setting the tone already. Yeah. Also, the fact that they only wanted five hundred dollars worth of beer. That's a red flag. Like, did they have a contract? <laughs> and it was like they five hundred dollars. <laughs> I mean, I could see $500 and beer. But then how many of them was it, though? That's what I was thinking. There was like a good five or six of them. What was $500 worth in 1969? Probably a lot. (laughs) Like it was that long. (laughs) It was a while. It was a little while ago. I mean, yeah, but I feel like it would be worth the same now. Maybe. Man, no, nah, cause when my dad talk <laughs> about how much in how much he oh, pays that's true. paid for stuff, yeah, like I was paying yeah, that's true. Eleven dollars, eleven dollars a month on uh car insurance. <laughs> how? <laughs> when, when? Like, <laughs> man, I see. Well, this is all bad. It all they should have just. <laughs> And they're not cert- they're not certified body guards, like no. They're a motorcycle gang. <laughs> gang <laughs> is in the name. <laughs> <They're> <laughs> troublemakers. Exactly. Well, let's see where it goes from here. The Hell's Angels stood directly in front of the bands in order to keep people off the stage. They parked their motorcycles in front of the stage to act as a barricade. So, yeah. (laughs) And then I don't think the stage was that big. No, it didn't appear to be that big. There were way yeah. this definitely happened pre-corona, obviously, because there were way <laughs> too many people on top of each other. It was. I would have had a nervous breakdown. We wouldn't have been there, number one. And then Oh yeah, that's true. <laughs> we wouldn't have been there. And then if I had gone with one of my friends, one of my Anglo Saxon American friends, and I would have <laughs> seen the Hell's Angels sprout out across the Man. And see what I think it was, I could be wrong, but I think it was like a a weekend thing, but this night was the main event. So oh, okay. I think he went because I, I believe the night before it was like black people. So I think it was like the Temptations and other people, other oh, black okay. entertainers. As the Hell's Angels became intoxicated and the crowd became restless, the drunken Hell's Angels began throwing full cans of beer and hitting concert goers with motorcycle chains in order to move the crowd away from the stage. $500 worth cans of beer on the wall. $500 worth cans on the <laughs> beer on the wall. <laughs> you take one down, throw it around. <laughs> like, what did you think was going to happen when you give them $500 worth of beer? That is a lot of beer. That's a lot of fucking beer. <laughs> When you think about like when you think about it, because again, inflation. So you talking about one case of beer now might be what? Uh you drink beer, what is it? Dang. <laughs> <laughs> I've never I'm trying bought to think. beer. No, I know. She don't have to buy her drinks. <laughs> it depends. Are you in like a twelve pack, a six pack? A twelve pack. Let's say a 12 I pack. still don't know. Well, no, because of them, you probably get like a big 20. Okay, so like let's say you get like the 24, like the big pack. That's probably about $20 now. 24 Possibly. $30 now. So back then, it, it was probably like a dollar. <laughs> no, it probably wasn't that. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, yeah. Let me get a case of 24 for five. Oh, probably. Five times. Five was 24 times five times <laughs> 500. <laughs> Wait, 500 divided by five is the 100, right? So 100 times 24 is, they had about 2,400 beers. <laughs> about 2,400 beers. Okay, mm-hmm. we'll go with that. If my calculations <laughs> serve me right. 
We'll go with that. By the time the Rolling Stones took the stage, the mood had taken an ugly turn as numerous fights had broken out between the Hells Angels and people in the crowd. Okay. (laughs) I'm trying to... So, okay. I am a lover of music. I like different kinds Mm -hmm. of music, different genres of music. But there are some concerts that I just wouldn't go to because I just like, okay, like the concept of like mosh pitting. If that's like still a thing for you young cats, that's a thing where people just. Yeah, what happened at um, Astroworld? Oh, yeah. Where those people died. Yeah. yeah. Was that from a mosh pit though? Or was that because. recent. There were way too many people there, number one. It was a little bit of both. Oh, okay. Because, like, it, at his concerts, he encourages, like, mosh pits. Mm-hmm. So they were showing up to do that anyway. And it was a lot of people. So. I don't understand the appeal. Somebody DM me and tell me the appeal of you wanting to push people around. I don't know. I even saw a couple years ago, Um, I don't know what concert they were at but Beyonce was in a mosh pit why was it like a healthy like a mm, like a cute know. like a mm, 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 <laughs> mm, mm, mm. like you know what I mean it was her she did have her bodyguard though but it was her and a group of white folks and it was you know but she had it was like a little small mosh pit I mean so people still do it I'm not interested in that. I'm not interested in that at all. <laughs> Lead singer of the Rolling Stones, Mick Jagger, I got the moves like Jagger. I got the moves. was punched by a concert goer seconds after getting off the band's helicopter. So this is First of all, this is before the concert even started. <laughs> he just got there and he <laughs> the, at that point <laughs> I would just turn around and got right back on the helicopter and be like, you know what? I'm done. <laughs> the patience. What the fuck? <laughs> Cause yeah, what you, you got say? punched. What the huh? <laughs> You heard what I said. <laughs> what the can you imagine just opening the door and as soon as you step out of the helicopter, you get punched. So that they were right, right there waiting on you. Like, you I'm, I would have been done. <laughs> you want that? I was like, all right, everybody, we have a good. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. Like, I can't even imagine. Like, and for what? Like, why why what what, did they not realize who you were like why how do you not know how do you not know who Mick Jagger is though like are you were they so excited you're there to see him (laughs) they were so excited (laughs) they had to punch him in the face that is ridiculous but no okay so I'm gonna say this the patience the patience that he had that this man my man's Mick Jagger had (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> higher than a kite on whatever yeah but to have been patient like that for what like a, 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 over an hour yeah i was just like man i feel like if he was high when he got hit he probably would have sobered up <laughs> i mean he probably didn't feel it oh true his true. face was numb <laughs> <laughs> i just like not even like a like a like he put his whole body into it like like, you remember wait do you remember that spongebob episode uh when that dude was trying to buy chocolate (laughs) (laughs) that one fish and he kept going chocolate that's what I imagine like the two person was like Nick Jagger and just "Mm." Whoa, I know you're excited. Oh but... my God. That <laughs> Chill <is> out. Ridiculous. <laughs> Mick Jagger pleaded with the audience to calm down. Within the first minute of the Stones' third song, a fight broke out in the front of the stage. 
After asking the crowd to calm down again, the band restarted the song and continued their set. Again, the patience this man has. He was like, everybody yeah. calm down. Everybody calm down. <laughs> <laughs> We're here to have a good time. Everyone's equal. You're equal. I'm equal. We're all here together. Calm down. That's how he was, though. Oh you, oh, you watched the actual documentary? I didn't watch the whole documentary. Let me not lie. I Where did you was find skimming it? it. On YouTube, I put it in the sources for you guys. Okay, I'm I'm gonna watch it. You gonna watch I, the whole I say that all the time. How long is it? It's over an hour long, and it majority kind of is just majority of the concert. That's why yeah. I didn't really watch the whole thing, but it's oh. over an hour. Oh, I just need to find the incident. I got you. I got. I'll put some um, time stamps in okay. there for you too. Okay. For you and our strangers, our listeners. (laughs) The set went on with fewer incidents until the start of their song, Under My Thumb. This is when Meredith Hunter climbed on top of a speaker box next to the stage and two of the Hell's Angels got into an altercation with him. One of the Hell's Angels grabbed Meredith's head, punched him, and chased him back into the crowd where four more Hell's Angels were waiting for him. It sounds like he was just having fun to me. Like, you know, you're not supposed to be on a speaker, but, you know, as long as he wasn't, like, on the stage trying to... He didn't punch Mick Jagger in the face, so... yeah. It didn't sound like he was being violent at all, though. Like yeah. you said, it just seemed like he was trying to just have a good old little time. He was doing yeah. it. This probably was his shit. He was probably like, this is what <laughs> I've been waiting on. You know how you had like that one or two songs at a concert and you're like, yeah. I hope they do this song. That yeah. was probably the song. So, yeah, I don't know why that was why that was the response to him. Yeah. Or, yeah, how did the altercation start, I guess, is what I would want to know. I feel like maybe they... Because I don't think it shows it in a documentary, but I feel like maybe they, in my, what I feel like happened is he climbed on the speaker and they probably pulled him down. Oh. And then they started fighting. But that makes sense to me. Yeah. And they were drunk. I don't know what he was, but they were definitely drunk. Yeah. And nobody really knows what happened leading up to that, so... Only the people that were there, and a lot of them are not talking, so. Hmm. But we'll get into that. In the crowd, Meredith's girlfriend, Patty, begged him to calm down. She claimed he was enraged, irrational, and so high he could barely walk. Can I just say, I just thought about this. Mm-hmm. If, he could, if he was so high that he could barely walk, how did he climb on top of the speaker? I don't know. Maybe she just meant he wasn't like steady on his feet. Oh, so. maybe, maybe. But yeah, I don't know how big were these speakers because I you couldn't see like the edge of the stage really. Oh, like yeah, I didn't That's a see good question that part. Too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And like I said, I skimmed through, but I don't think it shows it in the docu- documentary. Which that part could be one of the most important parts is like how it actually started. Yeah. It's not in the documentary. Okay. That's like, that's the main point of the controversy. Well, we'll get into it. We'll get into it. (laughs) Grateful dead associate rock Sully noticed Meredith in the crowd. Rock said, I saw what he was looking at. He was crazy. He was on drugs and that he had murderous intent. There was no doubt in my mind that he intended to do terrible harm to Mick or somebody in the Rolling Stones or somebody on that stage. That's not fair because, okay, he was jumped for uh, because all he did was climb on the speaker box and he was jumped for that. So there was so much going on and fights were happening all night. And I feel like if he was going to do something to anybody, he would have done it to one of the Hell's Angels because they were the right. ones jumping him, not the Rolling, not Mick Jagger or the Rolling Stones. Uh, yeah, I agree. I'm guessing he was a fan. Who, uh, uh, 
Meredith. That's what I'm saying. He was probably very excited yeah. for that one thumb song. He was <laughs> excited. <laughs> thumb thumbs song. up for the thumb song. <laughs> And also, if he meant to do harm to Mick Jagger, why wouldn't he have run straight to him? Like, why waste any time? Like, when people, oh, you true. know, you see those clips of, like, yeah. fans running onto the stage because, yeah, and then a bodyguard's yeah. are like, hmm, like, why wouldn't you run straight for Mick Jagger? That's true, too. And I'm trying to go into it unbiased. I feel pretty unbiased, I think, for, with, with, this, with yeah. this story. And I just feel... Like, like you said, there were multiple fights. Also, he got, he did get jumped and I don't feel like that was necessary. Like they could have literally just, like, like I said, you see them videos where them bodyguards be like, "Mm," like quick with it and then back to get you off and then back to what I'm doing. Like you don't have to jump the man. It was excessive. But then again, they're not actual security or bodyguards. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> they was they was crunk off oh. Oh, they was crunk off that five hundred dollars <laughs> worth of beer. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah. Oh wait, how you gonna? Well, never mind. I guess never mind. Rock. I was like, how you gonna feel like somebody had murderous intent? Like you don't know. You know what I mean? That's why I was like, saying it's not fair to judge because how do you don't know? Like if somebody come beat on you. What? How do you respond? Like, are you just gonna be like, "Oh, it's fine," or are you gonna be mad? Yeah. Like, are you gonna be like, "Oh, I'm ready to"? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Another witness said that Meredith was pretty straight, but visibly upset about the fight. Was pretty straight. Is that sober? As he should be. No. Yeah. Meredith. Meredith. Yeah. So sober. Yeah. Okay. That Meredith was. Yeah. So you already have conflicting statements oh yeah some people are saying he's high and the other people are saying that he was okay he seemed okay and who wouldn't be upset about getting jumped so baby because yeah if, I, if you would have just snatched me off the stage my little feelings would have been hurt i would have been like oh man that was yeah. really rough but i shouldn't have been up there like maybe i shouldn't have been up there. yeah also i'm not saying that this has anything to do with it there was like maybe they were right at the front, but in the documentary, there was like maybe one other black person that I saw and he appeared to be like a police officer. Like he didn't even appear to be a concert goer. Oh, So I'm just put that out there. Yeah. And it's crazy because like even from the pictures I saw, Meredith, besides the guy you're saying, they were pretty much the only black people yeah. there. Yeah. So yeah, not not his type of crowd, but. That's why I said I feel like he was there for his girlfriend more than anything. In his, in his Sunday's best, too. He was in his Sunday's best. <laughs> he was. The incident was caught on camera and became the main focus of the documentary, Gimme Shelter. It is important to note that the footage does not show what happened leading up to the incident. What we do know comes from eyewitness testimony. Footage from this documentary shows Meredith easily identifiable in a lime green suit, drawing what looked like a 22 caliber revolver from his jacket and pointing it in the air. The film shows what may be an orange flash at the end of the pistol in one frame, but because of the film's low quality, it is impossible to determine if the flash was a gunshot, a reflection, or a film defect. So you saw it. Yeah, I've I looked at it a couple of times. I found the the again, I'll put the time stamp or time markers, whatever you call those. <laughs> I'll put them in the episode details. Um Okay. But I mean, it looked to me, it looks like a camera flash. Uh it it looks like a camera flash went off because it happens a couple of times and then there's a person standing right in oh. front with um like the big what do you call that the light you know what i'm talking about like the big silver round lights that you like would have had oh, to have held yeah. back then and somebody standing yeah. with a camera i'm gonna look again and try to look right at the revolver and see if i see an orange light but yeah. i'm almost positive i did not see an orange flash i saw like three but he did white flash but he did have the gun out, right? He did. Okay, so this is he did have. Because we know we already know that he had a gun, right? Right. 
he, we know that yeah he did have it out what i was confused because okay there's a time stamp around like 18 minutes where he's they show him and he's like digging in his pocket but he's digging in his like right pocket so i don't know mm-hmm. what that was for he had the revolver it was in his left hand i don't think that makes a difference but i would assume that it was in his left pocket if you drew if you went to go draw it quick and it was yeah. in your left hand yeah so i don't i don't know that he intended to pull it out until after he's a, attacked i think that's why that stood out to me so much uh mm-hmm. yeah he does have it but it just didn't feel like i don't know it didn't feel like he took it out intentionally to harm anyone on stage. It looked like he was defending himself because he was he just got jumped. Yeah. <laughs> That's and then like yeah, I'm not biased, but he he took the gun for a reason. That was the reason he took the gun. Well, cuz he his sister told him like, you know, you're going on this side of town. It's not the safest. It's there are a lot of racist people over there, so you know, protect yourself. And that's what he was doing to me. If he had, had he had been a white man, would that have been the same? Resp- I don't know. I don't know. I don't think it would. <laughs> cause well, maybe cause they were drunk. The only thing for me is that the hell's angels were, yeah, they were known to be racist, but at this particular event, they were fighting everybody. Yeah, they were just belligerent. So, yeah. But I don't believe they they attacked anybody as bad as they did Meredith. Like, they literally jumped him. So, there's that. Don't hire Hell's Angels for security. Don't hire anybody who's willing to take $500 <laughs> worth of beer. <laughs> that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, nah, man, just go ahead and just give me five hundred dollars worth. <laughs> What's so crazy about it is they didn't even go looking for them. They went up to them and were like, "Hey, we heard y'all were looking for security. We'll do it. Oh, just yeah. give us five hundred dollars worth of beer." I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the documentary then shows Hell's Angel Alan Pissarro armed with a knife, running at Meredith from the side and stabbing him. Allen reportedly stabbed Meredith five times in the upper back. Witnesses also reported that Meredith was stomped on by several Hell's Angels while he was on the ground. Meredith's body was eventually taken to a tent where he died waiting for an ambulance. The gun was recovered and turned into the authorities. Meredith's autopsy confirmed that he did have methamphetamine in his system at the time of his death. Which methamphetamines get you, get you pumped. Yeah, that's true. So, so now we know that he was high, but does that still mean that he deserved what happened to him? Oh, because honestly, after all the research and everything, to me, it does seem like he was defending himself. He was, you know, just trying to have fun. He he shouldn't have climbed on the speakers. He shouldn't have done that. But they could have just told him, you know, chill out. And it probably could have been avoided. I'm almost positive there is a clip of another dude. I was about to say another Anglo-Saxon American. <laughs> no, but I'm pretty sure. Sh- I'm almost positive there's another dude, because I thought he was in the band. A clip of a dude on stage, like on stage, standing by the band members, standing by Mick Jagger and then one of the Hell's Angels looks at him and was like, basically like, you're not supposed to be up here and just pushes him off the stage. So, yeah. in my mind, I was like, well, why? was that the response to this the, to this man but the mm-hmm. not the response to meredith yeah or i i don't know i wish because i don't know how meredith responded to them like was it like oh we push him off the speaker then we just jump him right after or was it like oh we push him off the speaker he gets loud with us we get loud with him and then we jump him like you know what i mean yeah because initially if he was pulled off the speaker, it says that one of the Hell's Angels got into the altercation with him, like punched him in the head and all of that. And he 
ran back into the crowd. And that's when he got jumped by the other four Hells Angels. So it's just frustrating because with all the cameras, they didn't capture any of that. But they did capture, of unfortunately, his death. Right. But nobody knows. We don't know what happened leading up to it. So we don't know what kind of state of mind he was in. I mean, we know he was high, but still, we don't yeah. know his reaction to, you know, to everything else. Yeah. He's also 18. So I keep, yeah, keep that in mind. Their brains aren't fully developed. He's probably yeah. terrified. And you're terrified and you're under the influence of drugs. Mm-hmm. So, uh. Yeah, I think he shouldn't have stabbed. Like, why would you stab him? That many times. Like, I get, yeah. Like, I get, okay, yeah, he has a gun. But did he fire the gun? It's a big crowd. It's loud. So you don't know if he actually fired it or not. But you ran up to him without getting shot. Just knock him down and take the gun from him. Like, he didn't shoot at you when you were running towards him. So... He sure didn't. That's what I was thinking. Or allegedly. Or what's his back turn? What's whose? Meredith. So did he see the guy coming at him with the knife? So, dang, I watched it so many times too. It was like he, I think Patty had pushed him back, but he was still facing forward when the guy came towards him. Oh, okay. Uh, and I think maybe she tried to pull him away again, and then he stabs him. Like, you see the first oh. stab in the back. Yeah. So. It was a fight. I don't know. It was just a fight. There was so much happening. Yeah. I would assume that he had the right to have his gun and he had the right to feel like he had, he needed to defend himself. So, and I would Mm -hmm. say that no matter his skin tone, I would say, okay, if the situation was switched, like you have the right to say, okay, like that was a little bit too aggressive. Let me just let you know, like I'm going to draw on you. I don't. Yeah. (laughs) Alan Pissarro was arrested and charged with murder, but was acquitted on the grounds of self-defense after the jury saw the footage from the concert showing Meredith. I can't even talk. (laughs) After the jury saw the footage from the concert showing Meredith drawing the revolver and pointing it, pointing it at the stage or in the air. It didn't look like he was pointing it. Oh, wait. Did you not? At the stage. Well, no. Yeah. It, he was pointed, like, it said he pointed it in the air. It didn't look like he was pointing it at either one. It it honestly did look like he was pointing it towards Hell's Angels, but it was because they were all coming towards him. Oh. like, that ma- But that makes sense, though. Yeah. That's why I'm just like, this one is tough because it's just a situation where I guess everybody felt threatened on on either yeah. side and they both felt the need to defend themselves so and unfortunately Meredith was the one who can't tell us out of the story yeah do you feel like because the guy was saying he had he saw murderous intent in his eyes and stuff like that but don't you think if he and I feel like he pulled it out to scare them but if yeah. he really wanted to hurt them he could have shot them <clears throat> Yes, I agree. When they I, were running towards me. I agree. Yeah. It, it literally, to, to me, in my opinion, was like, he did have it in a kill shot. He had it like this. But he was like, oh, he was Lord. standing like, like he was like this. Like, like he probably was even yeah. giving him a warning. Like, don't come near yeah, me. Yeah, that's like, what I hey, mean. Yeah. Hey, that's what it looked like he was doing. Yeah. But if he really wanted to, he could have shot him before he got stabbed yeah he could have he or at least shot one of them because they were they were in like a yeah yeah the rolling stones stated that they were unaware that a murder had taken place during their set in the documentary Mick Jagger notices a commotion in the crowd and threatens to stop the show until a stagehand pulls him aside and informs him about someone with a gun The film then cuts to Jagger viewing the raw footage of the murder for the first time. And then, okay, so with that, 
so they show it in real time happening and then they show him looking at the footage and the guy that's showing him the footage they freeze it speed it up slow it down rewind it slow it down so Mm -hmm. like you can clearly see what's happening as it's happening it's still a little kind of wonky the footage and then like once the guy comes towards him with the knife and stabs him in the back the first time it's kind of like as he's walking all out of the camera shot but yeah in my opinion it really does look like um like meredith was scared and he drew his gun because he was scared and then i mean you got this tall black man with an afro pulling out a gun in the middle of a concert so the hell's angels were yeah. like oh we have to respond and this one came out with a knife that it literally just looks like both of them were attempting to defend themselves yeah and that that's sad though because like i just feel like he didn't have to die because i've I get he has a gun, you're scared, but, and then again, it probably, to them, it probably all happened so fast oh, that yeah. they, you know, because you wouldn't be, if I were in that situation, I wouldn't be thinking straight. Nope. But I just feel like at, on the outside looking in, if he wanted to shoot them, he would have, because he had plenty of, t- it seems like he had plenty of time I agree. to do it. I agree. That's also why I feel that's also why I feel a certain way, which I won't get into it because we've been here long enough. But <laughs> but <laughs> why I feel a certain way about civilians ca- carrying guns or like certain types of people carrying guns. Yeah. It's like, OK, if if people who are trained, if trained police officers uh, are out here accidentally killing whomever not even make yeah. it about race and they're t- and they're supposed to be taught to make those decisions like that why am i gonna trust bert from around the way <laughs> <laughs> drunk off his 27th beer or you know to yeah i don't know or it's same thing with a knife like why am i gonna trust a, a normal human with human emotions and biases and things like that to make a decision like yeah I get it. The world we live in. The world, the America, the America that we live in. Oh yeah, yeah. Shortly after Meredith's death, his mother Altha Mae Anderson requested that Altamont Raceway be turned into a public park to prevent any more wrongful deaths. Alameda County officials voted to allow the raceway to continue to host races but banned future concerts there and restricted the number of attendees to 3,000. So I wonder how many were at the concert because that was a lot of people. I was just thinking that. And on that little rinky-dink documentary video, it (laughs) (laughs) it doesn't look like that many because of like the angle. I mean, you could tell that they're really squished up in there, but that yeah, I wonder how many people were there. Alan Pissarro drowned in Anderson Lake in southern Santa Clara County in 1985. The police said the death was kind of suspicious, though foul play was never confirmed. What they trying to say? Uh, Suspicious? Yeah, that is a... How is it kind of suspicious, but not really so? (laughs) That's what it seems like. (laughs) I wonder how old he was or did he or do they mean no because suicide wouldn't be suspicious. They would have said that he did it on purpose. But I all I could think is karma. That's what I was going to say that it was probably karma. But then I don't know, you know. Yeah, I because what was What were the circumstances? What was he doing on the lake? Fishing. I don't know. I just (laughs) probably and drinking beer. And did he like fall off the fall off a boat or I don't know? Because how did he drown? Yeah. Why do they think that it's suspicious? Are they saying? Yeah. I thought maybe that was like someone was trying to avenge uh, Meredith, but that happened years later. Yeah, but then they said foul play was never confirmed. So maybe, but this is 1985. I was going to say maybe they 
did suspect foul play but couldn't prove it? Maybe. I don't know. That's what I'm thinking. Because that's all the information. Like, there's no information about the drowning. It's just he drowned. But, yeah. I Because I did try to look more into that, but I really couldn't find anything. So, I'll try again. Over the years, there have been rumors that a second unidentified person had inflicted the fatal wounds. As a result, authorities considered the case still open. On May 25th, 2005, the Alameda County Sheriff's Office announced they were officially closing the case. I was just confused. So this is in relation to Meredith's death, right? Like they believed yes. that someone else could have killed him. Yeah, that's what I was just about to ask. Like in the documentary, it only showed the one person with the knife. Yes. But maybe they meant he didn't die from the stab wounds because you remember they said they were stomping on his head. Yeah, that's so, what I was thinking. Okay. They sure were. So, yes, that was unnecessary. It wasn't like he was going to get up after being stabbed five times and start yes. shooting up the place. And they probably somebody probably at that point had already gotten the gun away from him anyway. So why was that yeah. necessary? Mm. It wasn't. It was they were going solely off of human emotions they went crazy because we as humans don't have good regulation of our emotions anyway that's why we don't need to be child <laughs> <laughs> i get it i get it yeah filmmaker sam green released a short documentary in 2006 titled lot 63 grave c which revolves around the last days of Meredith's life in the unmarked grave in which he was buried on December 10th, 1969. After the film was screened, several people sent donations to the cemetery to buy Meredith Hunter a headstone, which was installed in 2008. So, have you watched this? No. I didn't even look to see if this was available anywhere. Huh. Let me see. I'll check. Oh, you about to do it now? Yeah. Oh, okay. Well, hold on. How short is the damn documentary? It was nine minutes and 48 seconds. Because <laughs> they have it on YouTube, but it's only nine minutes and 48 seconds. Is that really the, oh. length, the length? I mean, it did it? say it was short. That's a short documentary. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, possibly if this is it, then it's on if this is it, then it's YouTube. on YouTube. Yeah. Oh, yeah. It does say runtime. Okay. It says runtime 10 minutes. Oh, okay. So I'll check that out too if I don't forget. Yeah, same. A documentary that aired on BBC in 2008 reported that sometime after the concert, members of the Hells Angels allegedly tried to murder Mick Jagger. Aha. Mm -hmm. That's what it was. They wanted to kill him all along. That's why they came and volunteered and was and said that they only wanted five hundred dollars worth of beer. <laughs> so they would be like, Yeah, we can do that. Theory. We can do that. Yeah. And they were trying to get him, but then maybe, maybe no, I don't know. I'm not gonna say that. <laughs> it's too so, much. Final thoughts. It's too much. You want me to go first? It's too much. That's my final thought. <laughs> yeah, I was gonna say that too <laughs> it's just because it, it is and then people wonder it's why unfortunate. it is unfortunate and then people wonder why there are you probably are this person but there are people that are like I'm gonna just stay at home because I, yep I, <laughs> you never know you never know and he was just they were all just out trying to have a well I don't know what the hell's angels were but they were trying to party they were trying to have a good time Meredith yeah. seemed to want to just have a good time and I just don't understand what happened. And then even think about how his sister felt because she told him not to go. Oh, yeah. She told him not to go because she she knew. I mean, I'm pretty sure she didn't think that would happen, but she knew something would happen with him being about the only black person. Yeah. So with him being Afro-American and yeah. your girlfriend is white and i'm not saying that that had anything to do with it but i mean kind 
a little bit because do you think yeah how they saw them together and was like oh we're gonna yeah then he yeah. on a nice suit a clean he was clean yep. but there are some people that are just like mm, yeah we don't like that it's just sad all around and i just hate because like when it when it first happened and when the documentary came out they were everything was oh meredith was the aggressor yeah so it wasn't until i don't want to say well kind of recently that i saw articles where it's like no they're making this about not making it well yeah making it about race because you have this aggressive black man who was high on drugs who was murderous but that wasn't really the case yes he was high but he was defending himself and when it first came out i believe they didn't put that out there that he got jumped like details slowly started coming out but people by then people were over it right you know what i mean yeah but i honestly don't think he was the aggressor i think he was defending himself and I think you he's young. He's somewhere by himself. Yeah, his girlfriend was there, but you know. He's by he was by himself. Yeah. Except for that one. With all random. these white people. <laughs> That's why I say except for that one <laughs> random man that was in the video. Yeah. He was by himself for the most part. And he's young. He's a kid. Yeah. It could have all been avoided in the words of my co host. They would yes. If they would have just hired actual security. That too. Or even if the Hells Angels wouldn't have had $500 worth of beer in their system. (laughs) That too. Or. And (laughs) (laughs) it's so much. They should have. It should have been planned out more. That too. Like they just threw it together. That too. So. And the Hells Angels didn't have to respond to that. You could have just pulled them off stage. Yeah. Kept it moving. Yep. But here we are. Well, that is all, folks. 12 hours later (laughs) in our time. It feels like it. (laughs) Be sure to follow us on Instagram at It's a Strange World Podcast, Twitter at Pod Strange World, and on Facebook and TikTok at It's a Strange World After All. For the month of February, make sure you turn on those notifications for our Instagram posts so that you can keep up with our hashtag killer couples posts. We will return to the hashtag Myth Mondays and hashtag Strange Saturdays posts next month. We would love to hear from you. Yes, you there listening in podcast land. Tell us what you think about this Meredith Hunter case. If you watch the documentary, what are your thoughts on his altercation with the Hells Angels? Let us know. Also, if there's anything in the world of strange or any true crime cases you would like for us to cover, let us know. Have you ever heard a strange boomp in the night? Boomp. <laughs> Have you? I was in the <laughs> middle of a yawn. <laughs> Have you ever seen shadow figures moving about? Have you ever stumbled upon something unexplainable? We want to know about it, and with your permission, share it with our listeners. We are still accepting submissions, guys. Uh, you can send those. Oh yes, we are. <laughs> you can send those <laughs> to it's a strange world after all at gmail.com or DM us at any other social media platforms. D mentioned even if you just want to say hey there we'll be there thank you for tuning into another episode of it's It's a strange strange world world after after all all. (laughs) (laughs) thank you guys as always for keeping it strange wait 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 with us also thank you if we have any day ones uh, day one strange gang oh yeah thank you thank you we have a few yeah i mean you better you, we hoping they back again in season two. Oh yeah no nah, i have people get <laughs> like uh when are y'all coming back <laughs> <laughs> we're back same same but thank you bye, bye, bye. thank you bye <laughs>